Okay, so now that the 2022-2023 NFL season is officially over, I thought, hey, it might be fun to just go back and let's look at each and every NFL team and see how they perform this year. And also just to spice it up a little bit more, I'm going to try to aim for about one minute for each team, give or take, so uh, who's first on the chopping block? Ah, oh, Buffalo, Buffalo. This season could have been so much better. Earlier in the season, I predicted that they would go on to win the Super Bowl and play against the Vikings, neither of which happened mainly because of injuries on Buffalo's side. I do firmly believe that if they didn't have all these horrible things happening to them off the field as well as on the field, that they could have done some serious damage. But I was just wrong. I, I should have expected lower things from the Bills. We've seen them just fall in the playoffs year after year, so... Yeah, I guess try again next year, Buffalo, and the next year, and keep keep trying, I guess. Start with Matt, I'll kiss him. The Dolphins are another team that really just could have done so much more, and this one wasn't their fault at all. I was very skeptical if this Tyreek Hill uh, to a pairing would be successful for the future, but boy was I wrong. They were on fire in the beginning of the season. And then, uh, yeah, concussion number one, two, and three to all of their quarterbacks, and all of a sudden the Dolphins were trying to just get back into the playoffs. It's a shame because they even went all in getting a ton of defensive guys and adding some fire power on offense, but man, injuries just ruined everything. But you know, Dolphins, you can't complain about this season at all. I'm sure you had no expectations going into the playoffs, and those expectations were over-delivered as you almost beat the Bills, and now you have a coach for the future. Just, uh, please stop killing Tua, please. Uh-oh, it's picked off! Uh-oh! Oh, Patriots, Patriots. What, what, what is, what is going on over there? Look, the Patriots are always going to just pull out a random win here or there, and they're never going to be bad, but they're never going to be very, very good. I personally don't think Mac Jones or Bailey Zappi are anything super special for the future, so you kind of have to decide, do you want to blow it up and try to find an even better quarterback, or just live in perpetual mediocrity? It's a hard decision, because you still have Bill Belichick as the coach, so, and, uh, he doesn't really have too much longer left in the NFL, so do you want to honor his last years or just completely blow it up? Oh, God, I, this... What an unfortunate division. The expectations for the Jets this year were very, very low, and they immediately showed the potential they had early on as their defense just completely carried the load. God, what if? Imagine if Zach Wilson was like... Uh, one half of Patrick Mahomes. The Jets might have just won the Super Bowl last year, but they had the biggest quarterback disaster of the entire year, as Zach Wilson showed that he just might be the worst player in the NFL, and they need a replacement ASAP. I mean, you just had a fantastic draft picking up the offensive and defensive rookie of the year, and all you need is a quarterback, so we'll see if they try to try to find someone in the draft, or just go with Derek Carr and Jimmy Garoppolo, the replacement band-aid. Uh, but, you know, in Robert Sala they trust, I guess. Baltimore is another really, really weird team, because early on, Lamar Jackson was looking like this MVP candidate of the league, don't forget that, and then he got injured and everything just fell off a cliff. They were still picking up not convincing wins at all, but without Lamar, everyone knew they were going to have no chance in the playoffs. But all of that doesn't matter, because the only thing that does is bringing back the former MVP. Sign the man to a contract. Nothing else needs to be said. You have the pieces around him, except for wide, rec wide receiver, but you just bring him back and everything will be fine, Baltimore. <sighs> You know, the Bengals, they don't need to do anything at all. They might be the most stable franchise in the entire league right now. I, for one, was a complete doubter of Zach Taylor and his system as just the coach of the Bengals, and damn, he's proved me wrong over the years. Obviously, you need to just continue to bolster that O-line, keep Joe Burrow protected, and you're good, but uh, the Jesse Bates situation actually has some potential to get messy. But uh, with all the criticism I have for the Bengals, I'm, I'm done uh, predicting anything bad to happen to them, because when I do, uh doesn't work out for me. The Cleveland Browns. I, <laughs> look, you, you've already thrown your future away. I could talk for hours about how bad of a decision it was to swing for the fences on a quarterback that was under legal investigation, but uh, no, I'm not. Instead, let me just ask you one question, Browns fans. Do you still have hope? Do you think that things are going to get better for the future? Honestly, do you? Uh, 
It, it, it's a tough scene out there in Cleveland. It is a tough scene. I'm dancing on the logo, boys! I'm dancing on the logo! The Steelers also are uh, in a weird predicament, at least, because they have a young quarterback in Kenny Pickett who looks to be at least a starter-level quarterback, except they also have old guys everywhere on the roster. You know, guys like Cameron Hayward don't have too much left in the tank, so you, you gotta make a decision. Do you actually think that this team is good enough to compete for a Super Bowl in the future? I just, I don't know if this is the core to do it. I, if I were them, I would blow it up, but I completely understand that you still have Mike Tomlin, and uh, with him, I guess you got a chance at anything. Well, you sabotaged your first overall pick odds, and um, I, I can't, I still can't believe they did this. Well, why? Well, what else do you want me to say, man? The Texans are just gonna be an unwatchable disaster for yet another season, and you know that's probably fine with Texans fans, to be honest. <laughs> Look, if you if you were watching my recaps this season, you'd know how harsh I was on the Colts, and to what I believe, for good reason. They just have never been able to recover from losing Andrew Luck, and I'm tired of the Colts just putting replacement bandages at the quarterback position. Good God, just... Get a young guy, anyone, just get any young quarterback and start developing them because you are not going anywhere with this core. I mean, hell, I might even throw out trading for Zach Wilson as an op- Actually, no, that's- <laughs> what the hell am I thinking? I fully expect them to take, like, CJ Stroud in the draft, but, you know, with the Colts, you never know, you never know. I'm telling you now, I have plans that I cannot share with you right now. What a season, Jacksonville. What a season. I, you just surpassed everyone's expectations, and I gotta applaud that. A team that has just been in absolute misery since the Saxonville era. With Doug Peterson and Trevor Lawrence, you now have an insanely bright future. And even better, your division just plain sucks ass, so you should be able to dominate that, and hopefully should get into the playoffs for the next better half of a decade. Just don't blow it again, Jacksonville. Don't mess up. Uh... Tennessee, what are we what are we doing now? Yes, you could blame this last season on injuries, and that isn't a wrong idea. But at some point, you gotta realize that there is also a very clear ceiling on this team. What this season proved is that Ryan Tannehill is never going to win you anything, and the last season, and the season before that. So just make up your mind. I don't think you'll be able to compete with Jacksonville. So while Mahomes is still in his prime in the AFC, and the rest of your division is tanking, you might as well follow suit. One coach alone is not enough to will a team into a playoff spot, and hopefully you don't learn that in the very near future. Yeah, Denver, you're you're locked into this position. In this past season, we watched Russell Wilson, the Hall of Fame quarterback, just turn into a skeleton of what he used to be. So what do you do now? Well, I guess just pray that Sean Payton can bring his career back from the grave. Yeah, there's, there's nothing else to say. Your defense was incredible, but it just doesn't matter when you can't score any points. Just, I guess, yeah, all you can do is pray that Javante Williams comes back to 100% health, Jerry Judy continues to develop, and Russell Wilson can at least least be an okay pocket passer. I'm, I'm trying to be optimistic here. It means a lot. I could kiss you right now. You did it again, Kansas City. I was so wrong. I really thought that Tyree Kill being gone would just be too much for this Chiefs team to overcome, but... Yeah, Mahomes. You walked right through the AFC as you've done for the past five years, and then walked straight to the Super Bowl as well, and won it with a hobbled Mahomes. And it's just ridiculous. Each and every year, the Chiefs just continue to reload. Like, how is this fair that they keep picking up guys like Creed Humphrey and Nick Bolton in the middle of nowhere in the draft? A perfect season, so as long as you have Andy Reid, Mahomes, and Kelsey, and a solid enough defense, then the NFL just might be looking at its next dynasty. Blow it up. Bl blow up the entire coaching staff. I could care less if Brandon Staley's schemes are working. There's nothing you can really do formulaically or analytically to overcome just being a certified loser. And this absolute meltdown from last year's playoffs was just the stamp of approval on what needed to be done so long ago. Obviously, you gotta get rid of Lombardi, but at the same time, this Charger season also could have been chalked up to just way too many injuries. So, I would be very disappointed if they rolled out the same exact squad next year and expected different results but 
We all know that's what's going to happen. To the end zone to Jefferson! Yep, my Raiders are once again at a crossroads and have no idea what they're going to do. You have two options. You can either blow the team up right now and cut your losses calling this era in Vegas a failure, or you could try and get a big name quarterback like Aaron Rodgers and try to make a run at a Super Bowl. I, for one, am of the opinion that this team is going nowhere. One singular quarterback is not going to be able to solve all of this team's problems. Uh, Josh McDaniels is still the coach, don't forget get that, and this is still arguably the worst secondary in football. It'll be pretty interesting to see what they do in the draft, though, but, you know, if you can't draft good players, why does it even matter? Dak Prescott. Ooh, Dallas, uh, what a dumpster fire. You, just like the Broncos, are completely locked into the current core that you have. I guess just hope that things will be different next year and that other teams in the NFC will get worse because you are not getting any better. I, I don't know what else to say. I how am I just supposed to treat the Cowboys like they have a chance at the Super Bowl every year? Because they never do. Incredible season from you, New York. You exceeded everyone's expectations, and Brian Dable looks to be the savior of New York. This season proved that Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley can actually work in New York, except now the time has come to pay them. So, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna pay them both the max, or are you gonna let one walk, maybe franchise tag Saquon? Your options are pretty much endless. And I would say this formula would not work for a Super Bowl, but in the past, I guess the Giants have proved otherwise. So in my opinion, I would say just try to make some good free agent signings and run it back. Just slowly build up the core that you have, but you know, reports say otherwise. Holding, number 24, defense. Ooh. Ah, what a, what a rough, rough year, Philly. The team was looking so good. The only undefeated team in the NFL for almost the entire season. And late in the season, once Jalen Hurts got hurt, people were actually questioning the validity of this team and whether they were frauds or not. Of course, the Eagles went on into the playoffs to prove they were not frauds, going through the Giants and the decimated by injuries 49ers to make the Super Bowl. And they fought so well. They played an almost perfect first half, and in the second second half, they kind of shut down and ended up losing the game after the Regardless, they were robbed of Jalen Hurts, potentially tying the game and sending it into overtime. And, uh, I, I, I don't know how you respond from here. I guess just run it back. That's all I can say. Run it back and pray. Oh. I, you're, you're the same team as the Colts. You have the same exact situation. Either just go all in and try to get a competent quarterback like Garoppolo or Carr, or just completely blow up the offense and get a young guy. The problem here is that this defense is actually insanely talented, so you really don't want to squander this unit either. And if this last season proved anything, that if Carson Wentz was like one half of his MVP form, then Washington could have actually been one of the better teams in the league. You got talent, Washington. You just need that one quarterback. Ugh. What are you going to do about it now? You won the tank bowl, Chicago. Good work. Now, what do you do with that first overall pick? I think you should probably trade it, but if they decide to trade Justin Fields, then things could get really interesting. Because if this last year showed us anything, that Justin Fields can run the damn football, and he will be a competent, if not very good quarterback in the NFL for the foreseeable future. I think it's ridiculous that people are calling Justin Fields overrated because he wasn't throwing the ball enough to his elite receivers. Regardless, the season was a dumpster fire, but uh, a good one? First way, guys, Kage, leader of the hidden village of the D. Speaking of a good, uh, bad season? The Lions actually at the end of the season, remember, were fighting for a playoff spot. And if Seattle had lost their game, they would have made it in. Uh, yeah, so in terms of a good season for the most miserable franchise in NFL history, this was one of your better. Jared Goff actually looked good throughout the entire season, and Amon Ross St. Brown is going to be a star in this league. And if you just continue to develop the defensive pieces that you already have, and Dan Campbell's culture continues to work, the Lions looking at this division might just have it next year. So keep up the good work, Detroit, and please don't fall back into your old ways. Oh. Well, Green Bay, oh, what do you even want me to say? Your entire future, absolutely everything, depends on what Aaron Rodgers will do. I am of the opinion that Jordan Love showed enough that you should just blow up this team now because, as the past has also shown, you aren't winning anything. Just call the 2010s a failure and blow it up. Yeah. 
I had high hopes, Minnesota. I had high hopes. What I didn't realize is that after about week four, your defense couldn't stop a goddamn thing. But for what it's worth, Justin Jefferson lived up to all the hype and more all throughout the season, and Dalvin Cook also miraculously stayed healthy for pretty much the whole year. And what do you have to show for it? A first round exit. All of that for nothing. You even went all in picking up TJ Hawkinson and it just amounted to nothing. In all honesty, it could get even worse next year, uh, but there's only one way to find out. Launches one deep downfield and that's picked off. Well, Atlanta, it looks like you struck gold, kinda, in the last draft. It looks like Desmond Ryder is going to be, uh, at least in my opinion, far and away the best quarterback from that draft. And uh, how else do I talk about this season? N nothing happened. This was maybe your most uneventful season in the last 20 years. The team had no expectations and they did nothing, but uh, there was a pretty weird uh, week or so when you were winning your division. Regardless, um, now that Calvin Ridley's gone, you might need some more receiver help outside of Drake London, but just keep developing your young guys and uh, move on from your old dudes on defense and play for the future. Pass defense as the blues rain down. Panthers, Panthers, Panthers. Quarterback, you don't have one. This defense is so good, yet you just, uh, we, we've already done this like twice. Do I need to just copy and paste the same exact thing from Washington and Indy to your team? So now you got at least three teams, four if you wanna count the Jets, that just have a great defense and no quarterback or offense whatsoever. I'm pretty interested to see what you do, I'm not gonna lie. Oh, the Saints, I'm just gonna say it. You need to blow it up right now. That is too much failure in too short of time. Trade Kamara, trade Cam Jordan, trade anyone that wants out. I think this team is so different from the Panthers in Washington because all of your studs on defense are all old as dirt. You're telling me Tyron Matthew and Demario Davis can wait for a quarterback or a new guy to develop? And is Michael Thomas even gonna play football ever again? Oh God, just please, please blow it up. <laughs> Tampa Bay. Man, what, what are you going to do now? Your savior of Tampa Bay, Tom Brady, is gone, leaving behind a core that, as we've seen before Tom, is pretty good, but not good enough to even get into the playoffs. And even scarier, during this season, with Tom Brady throwing the ball more than he ever had, your team was barely able to win arguably the worst division in football. So do you too blow it up? Even though there's also still a ton of talent on this roster, with older guys like Levante David still playing at the top top of their game. I don't know. Once again, this is why I'm not a GM, but I, I would say you probably could squeeze a few more good years out of this unit. Bucks will sign Jimmy Garoppolo. You heard it here first. Well, you're doing a pretty good job so far getting rid of everything you can in the front office, but uh, you also gotta realize there's still a team that needs to take the field. But early indications also show that they're probably gonna blow it up, keeping Kyler while he's still injured, and probably trading DeAndre Hopkins, especially after all the altercations he had this season. So, a uh, disaster of an experiment. Uh, remember two years ago when they were undefeated? Well, yeah, this year was very, very different. They were bad all season long, and now that experiment has come to an end. Oh no, Cooper Cup is down. The Rams, uh, I mean, I guess you've locked yourself into Stafford, so you're just gonna run it back again. Those are some big expectations to assume that guys like Bobby Wagner and Aaron Donald are just gonna continue to be unstoppable. And they might be, but also this season proved one thing that I thought was going to be inevitable, that relying way too heavily on Cooper Cup would eventually break down the injury prone receiver that he is. And yeah, he got hurt, and there's a very good chance that this upcoming season he isn't the same wide receiver that he was two years ago. But uh, the Rams don't have a plan B, they kind of just have to pray that he is that same guy. Because, you know, F them picks, right? <laughs> Boy, are the 49ers in an interesting spot. You got three quarterbacks on the roster. Garoppolo's for surely gone, but Brock Purdy now is going to be out for a lot of the season, so I guess you have to go back to Trey Lance. But if last year showed anything, in the very few sparing moments that we got to see Trey Lance, at the very least, he is not the ideal quarterback for Kyle Shanahan's system. And when Brock Purdy was handed the keys, well, they just didn't lose. So maybe they'll try to show Trey Lance's abilities early on in the season and try to trade him maybe? So as you've been saying for the last 10 years San Francisco, I guess just keep running it back. <laughs> <laughs> 
They wrote me off. I ain't right back though. The Seahawks are a team very similar to the Jets, except for they actually now have a quarterback. Now, obviously the defense isn't that good, but uh, I don't know. I feel like you might be falling into a trap by extending Geno. Obviously he's really old and I, come on, he's not going to get better than he was this year. I guess you still have to run it back because you still have Pete Carroll as the head coach, but if they're going to make a leap next year, it's going to have to be because of their young guys like Tariq Woolen and Kenneth Walker. I don't know. Maybe I hold them to too high of expectations because of their Super Bowl years, but that's my opinion. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, then subscribe because I got a ton of videos in the channel just like this one. And if you like this video, then watch this video right here where I went over the most important player in NFL history. It's pretty good. Trust me. Anyways, <sighs> until next time.